Dr. Lady Lovitch, it's, it's <laughs> such an honor to be here and to visit the Embry Foundation. I'm, I'm very uh, honored to be here. Thank you so much. Thank and, you, much. And, and to see so you. to me, it's a great honor. I have such admiration for your work. I am very, very happy. Thank you so much, Mark. So the annual reviews of physiology and, and uh, biochemistry have a series where they would like to ask uh, senior neuroscientists to talk about their life in science. Yes. And this article will be directed to young scientists as well as older scientists who would yes. like to know about the history of the Thank you, of thank you, thank you so much. So they very much wanted me. I'm delighted. No person would be better than you, Master. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much for my admiration for all what you have done. Hey, also. Well, thank you. But I still do work despite of my age. So yesterday you said you were motivated to be a scientist because you found beauty in the nervous system. Beauty in the nervous system. Perfect, correct, correct. So what did you find beautiful about the nervous system? Well, you know, it is of you. Every cell, I mean, nerve cells, particularly the brain, is such a marvelous object to study. And I was a neuro, neuroscientist, you know, so I was delighted, particularly when it was discovered the in vitro system, mm -hmm. and Giuseppe Levi did not discover, but brought it in Italy. So I had all the reason to want to work in this way, not as a scientist, but as a beauty. Mm -hmm. This is true. Mm -hmm. So the in vitro system was discovered in the mid-50s, 1950s? Discovered by me, I mean, well, using, I knew very well the tissue culture. It was not known in Italy. I was a student of Giuseppe Levi who brought the in vitro system to Italy. So I decided, because it was very difficult to find the nature, chemical nature of the pet, I said, because I know the in vitro is the best way. So I went to Rio de Janeiro, applied all what I knew, and I discovered the effect on not, I mean, of this factor, not of NGF or NGF, but I didn't say so. So, without this discovery, nobody would have never found the issue of the nervous factor in the, in the chicken. It was too difficult. It was necessary a system, which was the in vitro system, to bring the possibility to a biochemist, standing core, to identify the factor. So earlier in 1940, 19... 52. Yes. But, well, my question is, during that period, who supported you? <laughs> no one. I was working on my own. Not, I mean, I had not very much money, but I could do by myself, you uh -huh, know. Uh -huh. It was not financed by anyone. You did not have a fellowship or... It was in my bedroom. <laughs> it was a period of persecution. I was not... A, a victim of a personal persecution, but of the problem, of the time. So it was very, I did not ask any help. I did everything with my personal, very little financial problems. Not financed. So your family supported you? Yes, very much so. Yeah. Because I, I, they knew that I needed the little money necessary to implant it. I mean, practically it was almost not money. No. I worked in my bedroom and I just had a microscope which I bought, it was very expensive, and a very minor gadget, nothing. Mm -hmm. It was very little, mm -hmm. the amount of money necessary to do the experiment I did in my bedroom. So your mother was yes, there my and she, she supported you? She yes, helped exactly you. so. My father was already dead. Mm -hmm. So later on, when the situation became very serious in Italy because of bombing of the city, we moved to a... Uh, to, uh, Firenze? To? No, uh, Asti. 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 Uh, to a little uh, house in the mountain, near Turin. And there I continued my work and discovered the effect, I mean, not of Jeff, I did not know about Jeff, but uh, of the... But you told me a long time ago that, that during this period you observed uh, cell death, massive cell death. Yes. 
and it was what was in 72 discovered the uh, named, I mean, the, I mean, how do you call it? Apoptosis. Apoptosis, yeah. So I you, you discovered, discovered apoptosis 30 years before. 20 years before it was yeah. discovered. Yeah. Because I saw a lot of sessions die, why they die, yeah. what is the reason. Yeah. Yeah. And then in 1972 it was given the name of apoptosis. So during this period in, in Turin and also uh, in the early 50s, you, you wrote many papers. Yeah. Your observations you published in many papers during that period in the 40s and 50s, was it difficult to publish? Italian paper would not accept, but the Vatican accepted. The Vatican was against Mussolini. The Italian paper did not accept because of my name, you know. So I could not publish in Italy. Also, the only one was the Vatican. I published in Belgium and also published in Belgium. In, uh, in Belgium. In Belgium and in Switzerland. I mean, I could publish abroad, Belgium and uh, Switzerland, and in Italy, Vatican. So because of your Jewish name, yes. you were discriminated. Right? Yes in publishing papers yes. in scientific journals. Yes, but not in Italian paper. Uh -huh. I could not. So this must have been very discouraging no. to have your papers rejected because of you your name. Yeah. You I did mean, not care about You didn't care? No, Moses. I was totally indifferent. I did not expect to have naval recognition. I was enthusiastic in the proximity of uh, Robinson Crusoe. I mean, I was working for the beauty of what I was doing, totally indifferent of recognition. So it made no difference for me. I mean, I never cared about it. I was totally, I mean, I did not know if I could survive. I did not care about it. Many people, many friends of mine had already been brought to Auschwitz. Miraculously, we saved, were saved since I did never see because we tried to go to Switzerland in the night, and it was a terrible mistake. By chance, we were not taken by German or even Italian fascists at the moment we arrived at the frontier. And so I realized the danger. I did not know that Auschwitz was expecting me, but I knew the danger. So we decided at the last moment not to stay there, but come to go back to Italy, because the danger was very, very high. I mean, to be immediately taken if a German or Italian fascist would have seen me with my family, with the Valice, they would have immediately taken us to Auschwitz. Yeah, it's the most dangerous moment of my life. It's a miracle. So when you went to St. Louis and yeah. worked with Victor Hamburger, See. you developed a very important theory, the neurotrophic hypothesis, which is based on competition for NGF and other trophic factors. Victor Hamburger knew my work, not from Italy, but a reading a, a Belgian paper. Okay. So he was very really impressed by my research. So he wanted to know how we were so much different. He was a student of Spamer, was thinking that the periphery acted through induction. I did say no, it's not induction. It's just that it, the periphery is necessary, like for a tree is necessary. The, uh, the, uh, the water, not the water. So uh, we had entirely different view. So he invited me, this was after the war, to work with him for about, he was a chairman, about his a few days or a few weeks. I stayed at 30 years because I found in the Department of Geology, chaired by Victor, the excellent place to work. With Stanley Cohn came to work with me because I discovered the in vitro effect, the aroma. So I gave to him, I did not know Stan at the time, he was waiting, he was taken by Victor Heimburger from another important laboratory. So he was a young man, a biochemist, so he could not have discovered the neural factor if I only worked on the embryo. So it was my idea that I had to find a, a better possibility. I knew about tissue culture, I went to Rio de Janeiro, 
and they immediately discovered the individual effect. The first, I saw the effect on sensory and sympathetic inner cells. A decade later, but not even me, it was other people who found that this factor acted also the central nervous system. was not my discovery, you know. So your career has spanned now seven decades at least, and I'm wondering if you were to start your career now, what would you want to work on? I knew that now we have a wonderful new possibility, scientific and technological, which were not available when I was a young person. So I believe I would start, as many people who student here do, that is to become a biochemist, a molecular biologist, which I was not at that time. So I believe that now I would take advantage of the enormous development of scientific and technological, which were not, at my time, not even Durbecco, not even Lourdes, who received the Nobel Prize with me, could be for me. Uh, any advantages. Uh, they were more than me capable to work on virus. Yeah. This was so uh, your your classmates Renato Tobacco and uh, Salvador Luria uh, mm -hmm. were were working in in, in virology and also uh, in uh, phage genetics. But you actually created a whole field of neuroscience. When I decided, I was very much willing to leave the nervous system to work on virus or genetic. But they told me, no, continue to work, speaking with Gloria. I mean, you have done something very important, don't change. Mm -hmm. Because at that moment I wanted to change, you see, but it's nothing I can do anymore. Mm -hmm. And it was a moment difficult. Because I said, I did not know that I had done a really important discovery. I knew it was important, mm -hmm. but not so much as to continue. Mm -hmm. So I was hesitant. I had to leave the nervous system to work as with Rory or with Tobacco, who were my close friends. Mm -hmm. so fortunately, I assisted, and this was good. Mm -hmm. So and I'm also wondering, what advice would you give young people now? <laughs> Uh, many young people don't, are not interested in science, and uh, it's a very exciting time, as, as, you, as you mentioned. My, so, I mean, I will say, as I always say, that nothing is beautiful as to work on scientific or social or any problem. To be very invested in what you do. I mean, not be afraid, but knowing that you will never go ahead if you don't do it very seriously, and then all yourself. So the importance is important to be very engaged. Mm -hmm. What you do, you should do well. Mm -hmm. I always say that it's not problem as important as scientific or social, because I am also working on social problems, as you know, on Africa. So the point is to know what is important in life, not just only very simple and stupid things like being beautiful, having success, this is a nonsense. So I always say so. And uh, I have many followers, you know, not all, but many. So the people here are all of this idea. I work here, I am delighted because excellent people here. I mean, Antonino, Pietro Palestano, sure. naturally is the first. And uh, all the journey. I mean, many people, not too many, but some people still of understand the importance of being invested in important problems, not in futility. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned your work in Africa with women, and since you're such a strong role model for women scientists, and women scientists have usually more difficulty in getting a high position, what, uh, why do you think it's so difficult for women? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm writing a book on this point, you see. I mean, I mean, we are subject to ideas which are preconceived ideas. I mean, the man is more intelligent than women. They say, because it's convenient to them to say, it's, not bad, it's nonsense. The, no, we are the victim of a problem, a genetic problem. It's not true, because we are far more the problem of epigenetic, not genetic. Mm -hmm. I mean, human beings are not like insectary mm -hmm. or, I mean, invertebrate, entirely 
promo I mean act by a genetic program. Human being and vertebrates in general have the possibility to adapt to in non genetic but epigenetic. Mm-hmm. It's far more important. your environment is important. So we are no more victims of dogma. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean I write a book a dogma implant a dogma implanted per nuovo futuro. Sì. Tu, we uh, are I mean the title, the title of my new book is the destruction of dogma for a better future. I mean we are still victims of dogma, you that's understand? True. That's so I think NGF is for humans evolved ev- evolutionarily to not only uh, be involved in development of the nervous system, but also in higher mm-hmm. order behavior. Because, you know, in Drosophila and C. elegans, you can make a nervous system without NGF. Mm-hmm. So NGF has other properties. Well, as my paper, the vital role of NGF is from pre-embryonic to the last pan of vertebrae. So we know today uh, is a vital role and is present for before the formation of the embryo in the oocyte and uh, the sperm, the zygote, is due to NGF, which make a connection. I mean, the NGF is active long before the formation of the organism, like sperm and organism, you know. So this is preceded, I don't know so it's possible. So I understand you're still doing research on this idea that yes. there are early events affected by NGF, yes. is that correct? Yeah, just before of the oocyte on spermatozoa, we have proved it is already present there, the early file in the embryo, far before the nervous system is formed. So it's not that the NGF is necessary for, it's already present before. It is a universal molecule which is very important for vital role. It's a vital role of NGF, which is not only neurogenic. Yeah. We proved it with experiment of monoclonal antibody to NGF in a very early stage, the very beginning of formation. And we found out that with the blue moving, you have a, not the death, but a very bad development of the embryo, which eventually died. And this is because it's necessary, I mean, NGF for a real, it's not spivankai, it's not organizer. Organizer, if you take away the organizer, you have no organism to form. If you take away by, I mean, by neurogen, by interjecting, by, by top, man, yeah, mouse, or if you take it away by antibodies to NGF, the old, the embryo is formed, which is very badly formed, and is doomed to die because it's no capacity of proliferation. So it will slowly uh, die, not like uh, it will be no formation of the mm-hmm. of the embryo. The embryo is very poorly built. So I have to ask you an uh, old experiment that you did with Sam Cohen using antibodies against MGF. The original experiment in sympathetic anger. How did you get the idea to do this experiment? Sandy Cohen, who was excellent biochemist. Do you know him? Yes, yes. Excellent. Excellent scientist and human being, too. So it is very much his merit. So I found that it, uh, it was necessary to destroy the NGF through the method we had to find out what is the action. So we found out that if we destroy to antibody, now I mean, you don't have any more, the, all the sensors, the pedestrians do not, uh, they not, do not develop, you know, we have immunosympathetic. But this experiment was very, very important and it preceded, it's really a knockout experiment. Yeah. It preceded by 40 years, yes, a did. mouse knockout experiment, which mm-hmm. got the same mm-hmm. result. So I think it was a very key experiment that was done at that time to establish the importance of NGO. And I think it reflects a lot of creativity and also interpretation to, yeah. to do the experiment and also uh, interpret the results. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I say so in my new work. Yeah. I mean, it's a tooth, identical result, yeah. but different kind. 
Turgenic marsh, you don't have Turgenic cheek. Yeah. I mean, it's, all, it's the same. I mean, you can destroy the NGF in Turgenic marsh, knocking out. But you can also destroy by immune, by antibodies. It's two different ways of destroying. So in the E, in the cheek embryo, you have only the possibility of antibody because you don't have a transgenic cheek. But you have so in the mouse. So the mouse offers to us to the possibility of studying the actual range, not only in very early stages, but throughout a very large time. And also later on the Alzheimer consequence of making of NJ. So everything came out because we transfer our interest from the cheek embryo to the mouse as a model of how the NJ then later on came out also. So after 50 years of studying NGF, there's still a lot of interest. Very much. Yeah. So what do you think in the future will be the future of NGF? Yes, I can see Moses. I mean, my title, vital role, I have to find out, because a new scenario is open now. I mean, we know that NGF is not only working on neurotrophy, it's, not, it's also neurotrophy, but far more. So, what we have now, now, we have a new scenario ahead of us. We know that NGF is, is, a, is a, 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 I mean, is a, Vital role from organ, from uh, oocyte, uh, spermatozoite, uh, from very very early later on. The future will see to how this universal important factor came to existence and what can still open, open to find out uh, from this new way of looking at it. And yet, uh, I mean, is a topic in town, is it? To some extent, one of the action of the topic, and then we found out that you have all the female. One question: I know you're heavily involved as a senator in, in the Italian Senate, and I wonder how you feel about politics. No, I do not like politics. I like a problem, a social problem, and naturally, I am from the left and not from the right because. All the problem can be developed and be solved by open mind, not by being a right. I mean, people are better, no, we are all the same, but it's the way I will work, which may be different. I don't know if I yeah. Very few scientists are involved in politics. So and those I believe that with the people of Africa, women, it gives them instructions. This is what they do, is they will do as well and better than them. Well, you're definitely a role model. That is, uh, how do you feel uh, as a as a being involved in politics, in Italian politics? Not to be too happy, but when it was the previous government, I was very much in favor, and I still am. I thought that this was the only way democratic, not a totalitarian system. Or, and this is against the possibility of the government. So I became interested in trying to follow this, and I work very much in the Senate, in the Senate. And I'm working now in Africa, you know, to give women all possibility. Instruction is more important than ever you see during this problem. Mm-hmm. I understand you're the longest living Nobel laureate. Nobody else has lived as long as you have, who has the Nobel Prize. And I just wonder, what's the secret to your longevity? Because I never think of myself. I am totally indifferent. I mean, my life, I am uh, to some extent indifferent if we could end tomorrow or longer. I mean, much more. I have no problem of my health. I don't care about it. I'm totally indifferent. So you're thinking Until about it, others and you're yes. thinking about problems. I don't know if this is yeah. a, uh, that I live so long. Tonight I do not sleep, but I think. Mm-hmm. Because it's wasting time in that and sleeping. So all the night I think in the morning I have a new idea. But this is because I'm totally indifferent to food and indifferent to, to sleep. I mean, I never care. I believe we give too much importance. 
We sleep in both. So you don't sleep at all at night, just a few hours? Normally I don't sleep in the night. I take half an hour, not all, every day, but sometime in the afternoon, that's all. I, I have no interest in sleeping, it's lost, wasting time. And I don't need food more than sleep very little. So maybe the caloric restriction. Longevity. But I think it's also the fact you're you're very active. I also think that since you're so active at this age, that it has an effect on your plasticity. That it increases neurotrophic factors yeah. in the CNS and it helps you be more creative and yeah. you know, it also something I have to tell you with many um, I use every day my factor and jack in a collegium. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now we know that collegium immediately go to the brain and mm-hmm. work on the mm-hmm. cells. Mm-hmm. So it's not also possible that my vitality is in part due to the fact that three times a day I call the collegium easy eye because I have lost vision. Goes to the brain. I, maybe, I don't know. I mean, it's the hypothesis. <laughs> so, one more question. What is the happiest time of your life? This, this one. Right now? The last. Well, it was very good when I realized the importance of the discovery of nervous factor. But altogether, the very end of my life gave me the possibility of working not only scientifically, but socially, what I wanted when I was 20 years old. I did not believe to become a scientist, I did not know. I wanted to go to Africa with Pfizer to help against leprosy. Mm-hmm. This was my idea of life. At the very end, I work scientifically, but I work also to help women in Africa and South Africa. So, I do believe that the best period of my life is the, is the present. Wonderful. I had an excellent uh, time yeah. with Hamburger, with Stanley Cole. He was, a, he was he's an excellent biochemist and we had excellent relationship also with his yes. yes. Thank you so much, Grazie. Thank you, Mother. And you, the you, life you've had a remarkable <laughs> career. It is a, I mean, honor more than I, I deserve to have you speaking. <laughs> you have such a remarkable career. I don't believe I merit it. It's my, no, it's your kindness no, no, and no, generosity. No, no, no. It's not my merit. I mean, it just happened. Uh, the pleasure of a long life uh, and uh, quite uh, the end is even better than the beginning. You know, when I was a child, I was a very unhappy child because I saw that a woman, my family was a totalitarian, I mean a Victorian kind, my father. So I could not go to high school but I studied by myself. So I resented it and I was very unhappy. After this, my life is coming better and better.